You guys hear him? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Uptime Community. Thank you for joining us today. Today's date is May 16th, 2023. I'm Greg Messina. And if you are new here, we are a community of believers that are actively studying the Holy Bible and looking forward to that glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, what you do, and continue to do in our lives, Lord. We want to make this an interactive forum, so we do welcome your questions and your comments today. Don't know if you know who Jesus is, but if you don't, we do encourage you to get to know him today. Here's the bad news. I do have to give you that that first. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We deserve eternal separation from God and his blessings. The good news is our debt or sins have been fully paid for by the finished work of Jesus Christ on that cross. He died for our sins, was buried, and was the only person who has risen in a fully glorified body on the third day. If you believe that this has happened and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved from eternal damnation. And uh, this is uh, coming, of course, from uh, we have a verse of the day up here, which is Zephaniah 317, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Amazing. Amazing. God is so good. And uh, that was an awesome intro video. I really felt um, inspired to put that video up today. And we really do need to get out as the church. We need to speak out. We need to go out and really uh, get the lost to understand, bring bring home those who need Christ, who need to have Jesus in their lives as uh, their Lord and Savior as well. This is such an important thing. This is the reason we do these broadcasts each week. It's not for us. It's not for us to be on here to, you know, to just speak about what we have uh, to talk about. This is the Holy Spirit working through these gentlemen, through the uptime panel. And uh, we we want you to be encouraged. We want you to be blessed. And uh, we do hope you are blessed each week. Uptime, uh, unfortunately, took a little bit of a strike, uh, a hit uh, this past week on YouTube. And uh, it was one of the reasons of uh, saying things we shouldn't be saying. Uh, it goes against their policy. Um, unfortunately, that's one of the cases in which, um, yeah, we did have a guest who did mention a little bit more about the, uh, the V word. And uh, I think it was a little too heavy on that. So uh, Bob, of course, who does broadcast on his channel, End Time Dream and Vision, did take the video down in time. I, on the other hand, did not. And so therefore you get the uh, the strike. Uh, we got the strike anyway. So when you get a strike, you cannot post anything for a week, believe it or not. A full week of not being able to post a thing. You are able to sneak some comments in there, here and there, just to give you an idea on you know, a previous webcast or an upcoming live stream something that to that effect. But anything posting, community board, videos, no. Big no. So uh, it was, you know, we, you know, I think maybe it happened for a reason. Maybe this is something that we should be going forward, realizing this is something that maybe we should be uh, broadcasting on another location. And that location you're going to see uh, down below right there, uh, if you can see that. And uh, Rumble is one of those things. Now, I, I'm, I'm trying to keep this, uh, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells when I say that too, because there were there was a case in which if you promote these other locations, you can also get hit with that too. Um, I don't know if that still stands today, but either way, listen, we have, to, we have to be careful what we say because we want to bring these things out to you. And YouTube seems to be a great location for all of us to get together and chat and be interactive. So we want to stay on here. So we're gonna be more careful as to what we do, what we say, um, you know, not for the sake of fear, but because for the sake of, you know, the audience, for the sake of the, the body of Christ, wanting to continue to contribute and to be participate in these awesome forums that we, uh, we bring to you. So uh, yeah, anyway, with that uh, said, uh, 
we're going to get right into it. And of course, we bring back our usual uptime panel. We bring back Brother Bob Barber, End Time Dream of Vision. Hey, guys. Brother Robert Hagen. Good evening. Good to be back. As he leads from the As He Leads teachings. And then, of course, we have uh, Brother Kevin Buckman. Hi, Kev. How's it going? And Kev. we have Michael Pels. God bless you guys. Victorian Professor. Professor Excuse Mike. Me. There we go. Big clock behind. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> counting down. Time is short. Yeah. <laughs> Time is definitely short. So, folks, uh, gentlemen, thank you for coming on. Um, hey, we got a strike. I, I don't know if that's it's a good thing or a bad thing. In some ways, it's kind well, of kind of both. You know, it's funny. After we went to that video last week, I felt to right away like the Holy Spirit's like, take it down, take it down, take it down. And I was like taking it down while I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> show. I'm like, down, 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 but down. I didn't have the time to do it because right I had to get out to you, family. Yeah. You left early, and um, I had to. And when we were talking afterwards, uh, I, you know, Bob and I were like, "Hmm." And then I saw Bob started going over there, and I'm like, "Good idea, Bob." That uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things that we knew that um, it was probably either on the borderline or it was over the line, and um, you know, so uh, unfortunately. It, it's just what it is today, you know. I mean, it it wasn't like this, you know, five even five years ago. Um, so think no. everything has changed in the yeah. last few years, you know. Right. Yeah. It didn't really, take uh, it didn't take five years for the uh, censorship and the um, control of what went out over the airwaves to uh, um, get Germany. To the point where it was right. so you're talking about it, it maybe wasn't five years ago but it's slowly been going it's slowly been you know eroding yeah since uh, since the early yeah. 60s you know over a period of the last 40 years to the point where you have to watch what you say now i mean uh, there's certain mm -hmm. things that of course we, we don't want to use kind of language but uh, when you're telling this is different story, though isn't it oh yeah it is different sure. yeah well, you got to think about that. They're, try, they're, they're really trying to uh, dial it in now. Um, didn't I yeah. say it like yeah. two years ago? They're going to start dialing it in more and more. It's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And those mm -hmm. walls are going to start closing in, closing in. And trust me, when right before the rapture, especially after the rapture, you you talk about censorship. This is going to get yeah. stupid. Mm -hmm. But they're censored. They're going to censor stuff. People are like, why are they censoring this for? But there is an objective. There's a 2030 objective. Where they need to get the, the the mindset of the people of this world on track to receive the mark, yeah. okay. And you can't have truth tellers like us on the airwaves, you know, say, saying what's true, because it will foil their plans for getting that mark of the beast out. Ultimately, ultimately, we all know it all comes down to the mark of the beast. This is why the Bible says, when he throws the beast and the false prophet into the lake of fire, that deceived the world. Deceive, deceive, deceive. Well, if you control the information, then you can deceive everybody. If there are no other voices, only yours, like like you're saying, saying there, Bob, in uh, in Germany, it was just right. Hitler's voice and his, yeah. you know, future triumph, all that bull crap, which never, which he never made it, you know. But be yeah. it as it may, that's the only thing they taught. They even taught that in their schools right. and everything. I mean, basically, yeah. I mean, what we're seeing right now is Ecclesiastes one nine. Nothing new under the sun. Right. No, all being no. repeat. This is why it's so easy to pick this thing apart, right? Right, Michael. It's so easy to pick this thing apart because I've yep. seen it happen over and over and over and over again. <laughs> it's actually pretty incredible to really look at it and you just see the patterns repeating throughout history, and yet it's still the same thing over and over and over, like you're saying, and, and no one wants to see it. But it definitely reminds you of the 1940 Nazi Germany when people were just trying to bury their heads in the sand and not really pay attention to what's going on around them, you know, because I think it it has in a level of accountability, right? Everyone, no one wants to try to do anything outside of, you know, put any extra effort or grit into anything, and they just want to just live their own lives. And that mentality is getting worse and worse and it's leading us to a very crazy time of censorship because everyone's turning their heads to it. And um, like what uh, brother Greg was saying, you know, I came out and put a live stream on this past Sunday called mothers and covenants. And uh, 
I've never in the 267 videos that I put on the channel, I've never had one where they completely stopped my analytics. I mean, you see that it reminds me of a certain uh, all you can eat buffet time, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of years back where all of a sudden you just seen the graph and it just stopped and then nothing else happened. And then I was like, man, this is crazy where they're just stopping it. That way it can't propagate information forward. And then I also noticed censorship mm -hmm. coming in the form of ads. A lot of people are saying, oh, so and so is monetized and no one's monetized, guys. And just so you know, if you go through the track of monetization, you actually have to have a channel review, which mm -hmm. means oh, yeah. you have a YouTube yeah. rep look at it. So you're going to be exposed to your channel to potentially, you know, things that AI may, algorithms may have missed. Yeah. So it's actually a. Uh, you, you, mean know, we're not, we're, really, you mean we're not all millionaires like people think? <laughs> no. No, I just, no, I, 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 just I, I work, I work because I'm bored, you know. Yeah, no, it, it's just crazy because you know, and I see comments and people are saying that they can't watch the shows anymore because there's too many ads and and it's so I guess it's effective for some people. I mean, for me, I, I mean, skip ad or an ad blocker, you know, but no, it becomes it's just a current though, doesn't it? Yeah, it becomes a deterrent yeah. though. Yeah, I mean, is, when you have those ads means of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. who wants that? And who, who wants a strike either? I mean, who wants that? No. You know, so. yeah, some baseball them. stuff. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty clever, yeah. though. Yeah. We're, gonna get, we're gonna get in trouble for that. Those doggone, those doggone oh, Dodgers beat my beat my twins nine to eight last night. So I'm oh, great. Oh, my. Oh, I know what you're talking about, Kevin. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but, um, but Bob, I think you touched on this, which is during the tribulation, um, the truth is going to be suppressed so much that it's going to be very difficult for people to to ascertain the truth. Probably why God has 144,000 witnesses sealed, two witnesses preaching in Jerusalem, and then ultimately angels going throughout the sky proclaiming the everlasting gospel and telling people not to take the mark i mean so there's not going to be an excuse even though all this deception is going to be going on and there's going to be a major suppression of the truth god is finding a way and god has made a way in order for everybody on earth to hear in their own language exactly what the truth is so everyone's going to have an opportunity um but the interesting part Bob, is that there are a, there is a large group of people, and we can see them this day, that will um, never accept the truth. They will always believe the lie, and, and and that's why God sends them a strong delusion because they refuse to believe the truth. And no matter what we do or say, it's not going to change their mind. And and I say that because. At a certain point, not even uh, 144,000 witnesses, nor two witnesses that shoot fire out of their mouth, nor angels in the sky proclaiming it in their own language are going to change their mind. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do anything because there are people out there that will come to repentance during the, the tribulation and, of course, still coming to repentance and the saving knowledge of the grace of, of God right now uh, through different missionaries, through works all over, through people witnessing, through people inviting people onto um, channels to watch. And they, they, they are able to accept the truth, um, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And that's why, Greg, your point earlier is we should we sh need to continue what we're doing until the last second. And then we're removed. The restrainer is removed, the Antichrist is revealed, and then deception truly reigns supreme. And uh, and then, of course, God sends his ambassadors uh, in order to, to preach the truth. So there is a changing yeah. of the guard, yeah. as Bob said a few times. It's, it's, yeah. inter it's interesting because um, I, I really, you know, people, they paint God as being a, a this terrible God. It's not a, a loving father, but look at everything that he's making available and will make available. And uh, the word says that he wills that all men are 
all men to be saved and come to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay. Right. So that's going to be available, mm -hmm. you know, throughout time. And sure. he's not pulling the plug on, on getting the truth out. I mean, even in the worst of times, we, and we know that. And I, I really believe I'm kind of inspired to say this when, when you're going to do a program of any kind, whether it's a teaching or it's something uh, like prophetic or whatever, before you do it, you need to get in your prayer closet for a while and you need to say, Lord, I need to be spiritually sensitive so that I'd say the right things, the things that you want me to say so that we don't get we don't get a strike or we don't get some something that, that keeps this from going out. And if we do that and um, we should do that for each other's ministries, mm. you know, I mean, uh, when I when I know Michael's doing stuff. I should be praying that, you know, the, the angels are keeping the stuff from affecting it. You know, the, you know, the warrior angels and things like that. And the same thing with Bob and with Greg and with you, Kevin, you know, and even with what I'm doing, because if we get in there and we start letting our senses get in the way, we're going to say something that's going to cause a problem. I mean, not, you know, I, I don't know exactly what happened because I didn't hear all of it. But at the same time, we've been through this for a long time. And uh, we really need to uh, put on the whole armor of God, if you will. That's a, that's a little thing for my deal I just did. But uh, I got to self-promote myself once in a while. <laughs> but at the same time, putting on, putting on the whole armor of God is something that we need to do so in order we can wrestle, you know, so that we can stand against the wiles. And I said, he's, I, I said there, he's, he's a, he's a wily cat. You know, he's um, been around a lot longer than we have. He knows the word pretty good too. So don't kid yourself. There's a lot of people out there that say, well, you know, just use the name of Jesus Christ and he'll go flying in the mountain. But you, ha you have to really, you have to know it. And, and have your loins girt about with the truth and, and be prepared as a workman. There's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into this. It's not just, you know, we just don't come on here and just roll the dice and see, well, we'll see how many people we can get to view tonight because we're going to keep it. Um, we're going to keep it watered down. Mm, uh, that's right. Water, a lot of prayer. Not watered down. A lot of prayer goes into this. And you know what? Yeah, I think the, yeah. those people watching, they are prayer warriors. I think so, yeah. These are intercessory. Yeah, I believe it. These are intercessory yeah. prayer Amen. warriors. But and, part of the uh, key is to be, be wise, right? It's like it. gentle as does, but wise as servants. Amen. And exactly. I think I think the wise part of it is, is, is something that we do. This panel, basically, does really well. We, 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 we do, we, we speak in truth. Um, so that we can stay on, but we don't necessarily hide the truth. We, we you know, we speak, we, we speak in certain, we're using certain words, certain uh, types of things. It's a very wise speak. And, and, you know, we've honed it over the last three years as well, Greg. I mean, this is something that we have, um, you know, really come to, to, to understand and are, fairly successful at it. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it just, um, it, it takes some time to actually understand what you can and can't say and how you can say certain things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's actually interesting because it's like a sensor knees, right? It's like another right. language, you know, but also it kind of reminds me of modern day parables, you know, where yeah. we speak in riddles and parables so those who understand know what we're talking about but <laughs> how does that be like but it's a cloud over the other all thing. you can eat but they have to do with anything right so, right yeah, yeah. Like, what did that even mean i don't understand it's there like you know what, those, 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 those the holy I, spirit in them yeah. those are the holy spirit in them though we can they can get those parables and yes. we start speaking those parables yeah. you know because it, let's face it, this system, what they're what they're doing right now, man, it feels like we're on like this little piece of real estate with lava all the way around us, and that <laughs> lava keeps eating away at this real estate, and we're all getting closer and closer together, and, and we're trying to be 
we're not big we're not doing big broad moves anymore we're making real small movements now because of the light of the environment that we're in and basically i made this environment that they're in this system this system that's being built right now and it's being honed in dialed in like i said it's the training system for those who are going to take the mark of the beast this is, mm -hmm. it's the training system now we're, we're here in the midst of it trying to exist in this bull crap media system that's mm. a beast system media system <laughs> trying to do our best we can without getting kicked off the platform okay but eventually the day will come where you mention anything about jesus anything like that you're off what? you're gone that day is coming okay they're just they're just making their way there right now they can't just jump right to the top no. you gotta work yeah. your way up there you gotta do you a know. slow boil the frogs gotta boil yeah, exactly you know? yeah. you gotta sit in the yeah. pot Bob, and, one of the things the I wish you would do is I wish you would say what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's one of the problems. Yeah, I think that's what gets us in trouble there, buddy. I think that's what gets us a strike. I I think, if, I, yeah. if I get on a roll and I start really saying what I think, what I feel, and I just keep oh, going man. and I try not to hold back, I almost say, I, I can almost say a curse word. Yeah. Okay, when I get so angry about these globalists and these. Hey, did you really people. want to ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look what you vote. Look at the can of orange you vote. But, uh, uh, but anyway, no. let me say this real quick before we get too far into this. Kevin, I missed you the last time man, that I was on here. Oh, was that a couple? Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, for some reason I did. I don't know why. It just Ooh. didn't seem the same. It's because he he, he shaved. You know, he shaved, right? It's see, Greg, no, it has nothing to do um, with the shaving. It's just the, the, the fellowship that we have. See, right? Greg, I didn't start fellowship. it this time. I no, you didn't. didn't. No. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what he said. Those who say that I'm the, always the instigator. Uh, no, you're, no, you're no. Positive, I, I would I never say that. No, hey, guys, I'd like to share something with you guys. To uh, uh, Basically, you know, something happened this weekend to me, and I think it's going to get everybody really excited, really excited. Something supernatural happened to me mm, this weekend. Hear it. And the Lord basically said it just confirms everything that he talks about in Romans 8, 10, and 11. Remember, I told you, and I always say this every week, and with Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The Holy Spirit indwells within us. We're born again, sealed. Our spirit's brought mm -hmm. to life, okay? But that spirit that has raised up Jesus Christ from the dead that dwelleth within you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken the mortal body by the spirit that dwelleth within you. And I, and I did a video this past uh, week, and I'm about to post it here in a couple of days, dreams and vision where i go into the, uh i go into a teaching about that how we are changed from the inside out okay the power the uh spiritual bomb i like to call it is in us and the detonator is that trumpet in the air okay it's a remote detonator and it remote hits it boom it blows up the side of us and it changes from the inside out that's the rapture resurrection for us okay the rapture now something happened to me this weekend to confirm that Okay, I just got done uh, putting this, something like that together. I talked about it last week, and I was at my mom's house. Check this out. I was at my mom's house, and I was t telling this couple, it was a, it was a, it was a couple that was there, that they're, they're friends of the family. We're there for Mother's Day, okay? Well, I started going into about 2030, okay? And I started going into about uh, uh, 2030, about, you know, with the 2030 video that came out where they talked about the doors of the temple are open since since 30 AD, the lock kept coming up in the lock, left hand. Uh, the scarlet uh, cloth, will, will, will uh, crimson cloth will not turn white. Okay, all that since 2030. The uh, menorah will, will not stay lit overnight. Okay, stuff like that. I was telling her about that. And I'm basically breaking it down. Hey, Jesus' return will be, well, it looks like to me in 2030. Okay. And I said, I started talking about that, and they were getting excited, and I started getting excited. And then I said, well, you know what that means? You come back seven years for the tribulation. Now, in the midst of saying that, I'm, like, getting excited. I'm like, woo. She started feeling, the the, the, the girl, she started feeling the, the, like the uh, the Holy Spirit chills. Did you ever get those? Okay, Holy Spirit chills. Yeah, right? the chicken pumps, skin. Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then what she noticed skin. about me as I continued talking about it, she said, stop, what's going on with your eyes? She said, my eyes, I got blue eyes. When I was talking about getting excited, telling about that rapture part, she said, my eyes started to glow. My eyes turned really bright, blue, real bright. She was like, what's going on? Oh, my 
He said, what's going on in your eyes? And all of a sudden, like, what are we talking about? And all of a sudden, it just, it just light turned back off. And like, your, your eyes got really bright there for a minute. And I'm like, and I got excited from that because, you know, it says in Matthew 6, 22 and 23. Well, uh, Matthew 6, 22 says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye is be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Of light. So the Holy Spirit, my born again spirit, began to show through my eyes. My eyes got really bright, like a bright blue. And then they just dialed nice. back after I got done talking. So I, I, I was so I just wanted to share wow. that with everybody because yeah. that is so awesome. Powerful. Yeah, yeah, that's an awesome. <laughs> oh man. Hallelujah. Thank you for that's sharing. Awesome. That's amazing. And that's not me. Yeah. That's all of us. That's all of yeah. us. That's everybody listening. Oh, man. And it, it, that that's in all that's that power is in all of us. Wait till the day. Yeah, wait till that happens. You know? Man. Man, Ooh, that's man so what a power. Cool. The power. The people are gonna see too. The lost, those who've called us crazy, those who've said, No, none of this is gonna happen. <laughs> Oh, you've been called crazy? Yeah. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. Call don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but, um, you know, the whole the whole uh, idea that, oh, I don't know. You know, the whole idea that you're a freak if you believe in Jesus, Jesus freak, different things like that. Um, Bible thumper or whatever all the other terms are I've heard over the years. And, but it's uh, like Bob was saying, it's a, uh, I, I really believe that the world proves the word every day. Every time you look Amen. at what's going on in the world, it's proving the word Amen. got even truer and truer. If you really want to take a look at it, because of what he was just saying, you know, you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's, it says that it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead abides in you. Mm. Oh no, that can't possibly be. It says that it does. It doesn't say it was in you and then left. It abides in you. The word abide means takes up residence. That's a heavy thing, you guys. I mean, it's not like a, it's not this, it's like being sealed. We're sealed, right? Mm -hmm. With that Holy Spirit. Amen. He didn't put it in there and say, mm -hmm. well, you know, Hagen, you blew it today. It's out. It's, I'm taking yeah. it out. He could have done that 15 times or 20 times. Yeah. But it's sealed. And it's a big deal, and it's it's you know when you when you have experiences like like Bob was just talking about, and we've all had things like that that are similar happen to us, or people who walk up to you, and I, I know Kev's have had that happen to him where you're at work, and maybe you're not even even talking to to anybody about specifically about the word, but someone will walk up to you and say, you know, I there's something different about you. I I really I got a, some stuff I really like to ask you about god and you're going what in the world how, how does that happen kevin now the reason that happens is because of that holy spirit within you you know and it's it's god is at work and you know just if you live your life that way it's going to be radiant that's what i just got from what bob was saying you know the radiancy of the the radiancy of the residency of the holy spirit mm. if you will it's just it's one of those things where if somebody if, if a natural man can see that we need to be more conscious of it because this is what's gonna they're, they're gonna come up and say well, there's something different about you well they say that about me anyway you know they've been saying that <laughs> about me forever but at the same time it's it's really it's kind of an important thing. Uh, I've noticed that with all of you guys over the years, I, the, you know, the time that we've been together and the short time we've been together with Michael, just how how God is growing you guys and ha has caused you guys to grow. I mean, we're not we're not stagnating We're we've been learning. Um, we're giving God the glory and the credit for it, which is a key because it, when it gets to be about you, is it don't work. If this was Greg's channel, it wouldn't work. If this, if, if the end time dream of vision was Bob's channel, it wouldn't work. If the COF was Michael's, it wouldn't work. The things that Kev's doing wouldn't work. None of it. 
it just it would fall flat but since it is to the glory of god and to bring people back to a knowledge of the truth i believe we'll be able to stay on here for a long time as long mm. as we need to yeah and i talk too much again I'm well three talking. years <laughs> brother three years we've been on straight three yeah. years straight yeah that's awesome. not, yeah. not so missed started. one episode uh three years straight i mean started on and right off we've come on on and off you know between the panelists but three years straight and we're still talking to each other which is amazing especially when it comes to kevin and i yeah it was amazing. three years ago it was three years ago this week that um that greg asked me to come on and i and i um talked about the word harpazo i yeah you know, i was in Colombia. it was me and john and greg and uh boy those were humble times i think we had 12 people in the chat um <laughs> but uh you know the amazing thing though is that we we are all growing um so much these last three years uh by you know just getting together talking about what's going on i mean can we can you guys talk like this outside of this to like a whole group of people i mean there who who would you who are they where are they you know so yeah. um and there's other watchers of course that are on um other channels and stuff like that too so i mean you know it's not just us but i mean the fact is is that that's grown big time sure. in the last three years and and so you know it's, it's an our but god moment right like what jd frog says you know yeah people yeah. try to shut things down okay can't go to church anymore can't do this can't do that but god use that in order to bring people online in massive groups of hundreds to thousands of people coming together and uh, and rejoicing uh, in the Lord and and counting it all joy and you know it's it's such a beautiful thing that that God has manifested here yeah it's kind of it is amazing that's three years straight um, and we are still, going strong and i don't think any of us are are, are ready to shut this down at any time no. soon <laughs> no, no, he, we get another uh some of god counter move control but in some yeah. respects but in other respects we it, we are we are doing what it takes in order to stay on so well the fellowship is an important key to this too yeah it's mm -hmm. You know, the, the word says that we're not supposed to forsake the gathering together of the saints. We're right. supposed to get together. And and uh, it's not, this isn't a hot solo thing. This isn't uh, where you go on and you have you have a ministry and, and you're just on it, you know, for your own accolades. You know, you're you're the fellowship and, and God knows that we need the fellowship, which is a sharing fully. We need the time to. Uh, as you say, iron sharpen iron. We need to we need to uh, reboot our computers, if you will. We need to you know get a little refreshing if, from time to time. And then you know whenever whenever I come on and I I get ready, you know when I when I leave and and uh, afterwards I'm I'm usually sending a text to Greg thanking him for having me on again. You know, and it's it's to me it's a it's a it's a real honor to be on here Amen. with you guys because. Uh, you know, we could all be doing different things, you know, hey, I could be watching the basketball game right now or whatever, but I'd rather be much rather be doing this um, because this is more, this is a whole lot more profitable. Yeah. And uh, I can learn. I always mm -hmm. learn a lot of different things from you guys. Um, Good things. Uh, I said, another great thing about uptime, you know, uptime was God's counter move. I totally believe that because mm -hmm. I started right around the time of the Rona, you know, and the enemy is ramping up their game, and God ramped up his game with uptime. And I totally believe uptime will make a comeback right around uh, after the thousand year reign is over. Satan's released. I believe uptime <laughs> will make a comeback, uptime 2.0. You know, <laughs> it'll be back, you know, because you know, the yeah. people want to hear about people yeah. who are boots on the ground during that time a thousand years ago, not somebody that read it out of a book. Okay. <laughs> So um, basically, yeah, but uh, yeah, Uptime started as I totally believe it was a counter move. And one great thing about Uptime is the name, Uptime. Did you guys see yeah. that dream, uh, dream I posted? Uh, actually, no, I didn't post that dream, did I? Yeah, I did. Didn't I post that dream yet? About the woman uh, who uh, had the dream about Uptime, is it? Yeah, she had a dream about the uh, the Uptime. Um, yeah, the that was, that was the video you put up. 
sure. last yeah, game sure. mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So it's like that uptime is all about a representation of the rapture resurrection. Mm. And we're here to encourage you all that the rapture resurrection is almost at hand. Okay. Mm. We cannot continue moving forward with everything that's happening right now, with the collapse of this country. All right. In the, in the direction it's heading right now. All right. I mean, who here raise a hand? Think the rapture can happen this year? Okay, no, I think I the I think the the, yeah. the the environment is conducive for a rapture oh resurrection. <laughs> totally conducive because they're on a they're, they're on a they're on a race right now for twenty thirty. And you know what? You know the Lord is. I was mowing the lawn today. You know the Lord is telling me the road to twenty thirty. Mm. <laughs> road to twenty thirty. Uh -oh. I'm oh, like. Boy. You want me to write the book, The Road to 2030? <laughs> we got ourselves a sequel in the making. Yeah. Finally, and, Greg, I've been pushing him, but now he's see, he's getting inspired there. Now he's going, here's the road to 2030. If I write that book, The Road to 2030, which I'm thinking we're going to, is Ooh. the reason I'm going to write it is because it's for those people who are going to be here facing the mark. It's not going to be here for all yeah. of us to read. It's just going to be a book here. And maybe I can get it done in time where it gets printed because once digitally, once that gets censored, you won't be able to print that book anymore. Oh, yeah. So maybe I could just print like a thousand books and throw them out there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. But, uh, what's that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, also, I mean, get, get it out there digitally somewhere. And then, um, you know, then it could pass through people by USB and stuff like that as well. So on thumb drives. Yeah. Uh, yeah, them. I mean, yeah, the, the truth is going to find a way. Okay, we know right. that. So yeah. if you read it, they will come. Nice. Yeah, that, that, that book is going to be full of the Bible verse and full of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's going to be full of truth. So they're going to burn the Bibles. We get that. Okay, but the road to twenty thirty, they you know they may not even bat an eye at it. <laughs> so you're making. So you're announcing this tonight that you're going to write a book. Yes, I am, Bob. I'm not. Wow. Oh, I am it's official. Oh my yes. gosh. I'm writing that book because you know, I was like, I don't want to. Gosh, that, that was a lot of work writing that last book. Road, dude. <laughs> don't forget this. It's a road to 2030, baby. It's coming soon. I, mean, I could write, I could write fast, but the problem is all the editing. Editing yeah. takes forever. Mm. And I got tired of reading that book, Kevin. I got tired of reading that <laughs> book, doing all the yeah. editing. So yeah. That's uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Just pray for me. But the Lord said that you're the only one that can write that book. Mm. Okay, it has your flair, it has your style, it has your straight to the point attitude. Okay, and it's your sequel to the other book. Oh yeah, exactly. No one else has written the road to 2024. So I mean, is it, it going to be only a, one you can follow up with the road to 2030 by, by Doctor? Come on, Bob Barber. Right. Yeah, by Doctor. <laughs> <Barber. Exactly. laughs> Because my, 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 my main point of this book, I'll give you a preview right now. The main point of that book is that Satan is building an army for 2030. That's the whole, that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that battle of Armageddon is going to take place and they are going to bring a world army to Israel. All right. You got a lot of different factions involved that get it. But Satan needs to build a world army to face off against Jesus and the armies of heaven. That's what this is all about. The censorship. It's all about getting people on the right path mentally so they're con that way he has full control of them and also giving them the mark so that way they'll be better soldiers for him come 2030. Yep. And that's why the EU, the, uh, the UN, World Economic Forum, they're having awesome. a meeting this September. Mm -hmm. And the basic is all about how we can make things move quicker for 2030. Why not 2034? Why not, no, why not 2040, Greg? Right. No, it's all about yeah. 2030. It has to be no, done by no. 2030. No. It's yeah. about That's no. the, the world, world the world proves the word. Yeah. You know, and yeah. what you're saying there, Bob, because it really is the acceleration is um it's like putting the you know, putting the hammer down when you're you're in a truck or something. You know, mm -hmm. pedal to the metal and, and they wanna they wanna do it as fast as they can before people really have an opportunity to really think about it what's going on. There's so many things that are going on and um, so many people are just, their senses are dulled by um, news for one thing, really. I, I can't even watch news anymore because it's all just, it's a, it's just a dog and pony show. It's smoke and mirrors. It's like a magic show. 
but it's just all yeah. you know, it's not we're real. Gonna, we're yeah, it's we're gonna fake. you know we're if we if we you know like today they're you know they're saying well we need to vote this current administration out and we'll get another one in there and then everything's gonna be fine. It's a bunch of baloney. That's not that's yeah. what that's what Total they said shame. about the last one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And actually, um, I had a video called A Great Deception. I'm not sure if anyone here has seen it, but uh, I think you did, Greg, The Great Deception. There's 10 reasons that I list in that video of why you cannot put your trust into the system, so to speak. Obviously, there's many more, but there's some pretty big reasons there. And um, I don't want to go into it too much just because you never know <laughs> what you might you say. Mark might end in a, yeah. Hmm. So. But if you haven't seen it, go check it out because it will kind of explain some things that you will see that it's been an ongoing thing. Like what Brother Bob was saying earlier, we see the history just repeating and repeating and repeating. It's it's actually quite frightening that we have all this public release information and yet still people are turning and looking to Big Brother, you know, big government to solve their problems. And Jesus is the only one. He's the only one that can fix this train wreck. Right. So, you know, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen confirms now confirms that the U.S. government is on track to default as soon as June 1st. Wow. So <laughs> collapse is coming, folks. Yeah, that that mm -hmm. just shows you right there. If she's coming out saying that, I mean, she the woman's all over the place in the last few, <laughs> few years. OK, but now she's saying, OK, well, yeah, mm -hmm. now we're on set to default as soon as June 1st. Folks, the collapse is coming. Yep. Now, keep in mind, things can change. They always change all the stuff all the time. They sure. want fear to be put into the oh, system. Yeah. They want right. to put this fear out. Okay. Now, when we say, okay, Greg or the uptime folks said uh, June 1st, that's where things get, you know, miscommunicated. This is what coming out of the mouth of Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary. Okay. She confirms it. That doesn't mean it's going to happen on June 1st. Okay. Right. But just that alone should show us how close we are to all this stuff going down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, Klaus Schwab, you know, back in 2016, in the interview, he said that um, the, 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 the Industrial Revolution that we went through changed the way that we do, how we do everything. Okay. But he said the next Industrial Revolution, the Great Reset, will change who we are. Mm. Okay. It basically is, you know, we change how we do how we do everything. The process has changed, but their focus on this next industrial revolution, the Great Reset, is to change who we are individually. How we, how you know, basically putting the mark of the beast. You got your phone. Put basically, they're talking about taking your phone information, put inside of you. So the fact that he says that the next industrial revolution is changing individual people biologically. DNA and all that mm -hmm. stuff. What's that? The mark of the beast. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's mm -hmm. not that's not the next industrial revolution after this one. No right. way. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. So the fact that they are pushing so fast and they're freaking out because they need to get everybody changed, like I've been saying yeah. for 2030. Okay. That only means one thing. I I don't, you know, we got Pentecost coming up. Can that be it? I, it's just high watch now. Absolute high watch right now. You're okay with me. Yeah. yeah, you know the, the Klaus Schwab thing, Bob. I mean, this changing somebody uh, to that extreme, where you're no longer redeemable, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is is the ultimate, um, is the final act, and and it's uh, and it's it's coming upon us very very quickly. I mean, you can see the technology and the push and the laws. And Bob, we, we went. I think it was like three or four months ago. We talked about a law and you brought it up and, and said, this is biometric, you know, um, plus currency in one thing. I mean, this is buy and sell with biometrics and tracking. And mm -hmm. that is, that is the mark of the beast. So you can see that it's on the cusp of, of actually being rolled out. So how close are we at this point? To, to the to the rapture resurrection. I mean, we must be right on the cusp of it. Dialectical materialism. You ever heard of that? You ever heard yeah. that statement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard That's that back in 79. That was the first time I ever heard that. Yeah. Can you I just fill heard people in on that? Can you, mm -hmm. can you fill people on, in on that, please? Some people may not be 
yeah, people may not materialism. I'm not really, Go ahead. not really sure what what it all means, but it's it's um, a lot of it has to do with the AI, right, Bob? I mean, it has a, um, artificial intelligence and uh, the changing of <clears throat> a person's DNA, which is one, one of the things they've been trying to do for a long time, and one of the reasons why a particular uh, thing was introduced into our world. That's one way of saying it without saying it. Um, but uh, it's it's without God. It's it's uh, you know you don't the um, communists. One of the things about communism is it's it's a uh, it's a belief that everything is communal, but you're gonna have you're not gonna own anything and you're gonna love it. You're gonna you know you just be part you just be a slave out there and. You know, and the government will provide for you, and and you'll 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 enjoy it. But you're not, you know, that's not that's not the way we were. You know, we weren't wired that way. We were wired to be, uh, you know, God designed our minds for the Word of God, and mm -hmm. uh, our bodies to to be able to be healthy for a lot of years, and and to um, bless people, and to you know raise families and different things like that. But exactly. it's been so every so many things have, have changed to the point where where um, God has been taken out of so much stuff yeah. and replaced with, you know, can we get how much can we get, you know, get, get, get how much instead of what can we give? And who is the ultimate giver? Lord Jesus Christ. What did he do? He laid down his life. Did he have to? No. But he had to because it was the will of the Father. When you start getting into the Word and really looking into it, and you get into the Gospels, and you look at what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished in his life, and look at what he went through for you and me, he was an evangelist, in there, what he went through for you and me, then you're going to, you're going to fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to want to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. You're going to want to, you know, if you will, change lords. You're going to want to seek him. And you're going to, you know, like Bob was saying earlier, you're going to get excited. There's nothing wrong with being an excited Christian. Oh, you know, you guys are just using that as a crutch. I'll tell you what, I'd rather be crutched with Jesus Christ than... Roll a crutch and smoke a joint right now, mm -hmm. like I used to do back in the day. <laughs> Be yoked together with him, you know, moving in the same direction of what we've been trying to do. I don't know if that explained what I was trying to say there, but this is what I'm inspired <laughs> to say. I am so I'm so all over the board tonight. I'm like Janet Yellen, you know. I'm hey. yelling at you. It's gonna be a crash <laughs> no, one, on June first. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that you mentioned though about communism that's so true and um, Klaus Schwab, I believe, quoted or said something along those lines. I can't directly quote him, but about how you'll own nothing and be happy about it, yeah, right? Yeah, right. And exactly. um, it's so crazy, but you know what, guys? <clears throat> People in prison own nothing, and the government provides them everything they need. Do you really want to live in a prison? Because that's essentially the same type of system, but it's going to be, you know, worldwide. And the crazy thing about it is, I mean, personally, I believe that we're already entangled in a, a lawless prison with the way the system's completely mm -hmm. set up around us. I mean, mm -hmm. the only way out of it, guys, you know, it's, it's through Jesus Christ. He's the only, Amen. the only way, the only solution, you know, the final solution, guess what? It's not, you know, the, the, it's Jesus. Jesus is the final solution, guys. He's the only one that can pull us out of this train wreck. He is the it, way. It's, it's, yeah. It's crazy because when you see all that, you're like, man, this is nuts. And people yeah. are still, you know, but For those, and then uh, yeah. have you heard about the, uh, you know, the ch ch going into uh, vegetables and stuff of that nature? And I even heard um, that it was a better median potentially for it to traverse through. And I was like, you know, that kind of reminds me of going all the way back to Genesis with Cain and Abel. You know, he wanted to bring his fruit, his veggies to the table. It's like it's going all the way back to that. It's just so bizarre. I guess a great word for it yeah. is just to say it's just a really bizarre world that we're 
that we're living yeah. in right now. Can I read wow. the? Uh, yeah. Can I read what the definition of uh, dialectical materialism is here? Absolutely. Off of, off of, off of Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> yeah. Dialectical. <laughs> this is you know this is what they say here. Dialectic materialism is a philosophy of science, a philosophy of history, and a philosophy of nature based upon the writings of of um, and it went blank. Karl Marx and Engels. And my screen oh. just went. My screen just okay. went blank on here. Um, and then there's some other stuff, but it just went. It just went blank. And do dropped. But it was but, it was communism basically. Marx and Engels. Yes. And um, the, and the Karl Marx of the Marx Brothers. Or? <laughs> Look, the Marx Brothers were funny. The Karl Marx wasn't funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> But um, you know, it, it, it's interesting stuff. It really is. I like what you said there, Michael, about these, uh, about, you know, they want to put us, basically what they want to do is just put us into a big prison, turn turn our country yeah. into a big prison, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the Lord showed me about these global, I get angry with these globalists all the time, you know, one of my prayers and stuff like that, and I got to try to calm down. And, you know, the Lord keeps telling me, it said, you know, look, Bob, just calm down. Look, these globalists, they're getting their reward right now okay it ain't much of a reward compared to what we're getting okay glorified bodies eternity in heaven be able to travel traverse the cosmos and all that great stuff that's just the beginning of it okay but them you know who these guys remind me of these guys remind me of those funny uh movies you ever seen these uh, these prisoners in, in uh these prisoners like in a prison camp whatever and these prisoners are at the top of the uh food chain there because they don't have to eat the regular prison food because they get somebody sneaking in McDonald's hamburgers for them. Okay. So they walk around, <laughs> and I got McDonald's hamburger, ain't no meatloaf between these buns, you know, and walk around having a good time. And they're at the top of the food chain. That's what these guys are like. Okay. Yeah. They're like, they're, 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 they're the cheeseburger guy. All right. Walking around <laughs> with that cheeseburger in prison. Like, you're in prison, dude. Yeah. Okay, why are you making a big deal about a crappy little cheeseburger? Okay, but the thing is, you are in prison. So this is the mm -hmm. best they're ever going to do. So they're going all in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and and who came to set who who came to set the captives free? It's in Isaiah. And to you know, open the eyes of blind. Mm. And led kept he led it says he led captivity captive, mm. and gave gifts in the men. He led captivity captive, the things that captivate men, he led captive. And he says he's the captain of our salvation. I mean this this Jesus, check it up, check him out, please. Is that okay to say that? I just did. Give him a mm. chance, mm. please, folks. If you right. have never given him a chance, and you're on here. Don't wait till tomorrow at three o'clock. Do it now. Not 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 Amen. not now, Bob. Don't wait till three o'clock. This is not the time to wait until three o'clock tomorrow. No. Okay, no. this is not the time to do that. Okay, that waiting an hour right now is not good. Okay, yeah. you, you could throw around maybe a day or so, maybe about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But in this environment right now, okay, that rapture resurrection is like any moment. Okay, yeah. we had Title 42 take a dump last week. Okay, Title 42 goes down. All right, so now we got this huge influx going coming into our uh, country right now. Now I believe the United States is a is a is a timepiece for the Age of Grace. The worse the United States gets, the closer we are to the rapture. And and UN documents showed. I don't know if you guys know about this, but about 10 15 years ago, UN documents they had planned on seven, sending 700 million Im illegal immigrants into this country about this time and up until the 2030s. They want to get 700 million people in here. And our borders are wide open from all four corners of us, okay? So we're wide open. They're all flowing into this country now. And the worst part about it is they don't want people here like us. Or it doesn't matter your skin color or nothing. If you're an American, if you believe in your rights, you believe in your, your Fifth Amendments, your First, Second, Third, Fourth, Fifth Amendment, you believe in all your rights, you believe in constitutional law and all that stuff, they don't want people like us here. They want they want these people to come in here 
who are used to living under communism and come here and have it just a little bit better. And they become the majority. So that way you got a dictator like the criminal Biden making all his laws. Like, oh, okay, we're used to that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go right and do what you want to do. Okay. So you see what's happening here. And if that happens, America's dust. At Bob, you said you said 700 million. You know, that's that's exactly twice the population of the country right now. That, that does not sound good. Right. Exactly. It, so isn't it? They want to turn us into a they want to turn us into like all the other communists. A fourth world, world country. Yeah, that's what they want to do. Yeah. OK, so if yeah. that's the plan by 2030. Once again, here we go. 2030. Agenda 2030. OK. Everything we just got this bottleneck for 2030. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be a contributor to your book. I'll, I'll, at least I'll go in there and I'll have people, you know, exhort people to read it. I mean, <laughs> not, not that I'm going to do a chapter <laughs> <laughs> as he leads in 2030. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I'd, lo I'd love to help you in any way I can. I mean, every time I, you know, every time I've heard these things, I always think, well. These guys are a lot more educated and fine tuned in the art, fine art of doing this stuff than I am. But we're all you know members. What? We're all members of the body of Christ, right, Kev? So we all have contributions. To, to you know what I do, Bob? Make. I'm going to say, just give Jesus a chance. All right. I'm going to put your name right after. Like, this is the person that quotes it, you know? Right. I'll put your yeah. name right after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see a nice that's, that, that's That's exactly what he did with me, you know? And, <laughs> and it was, I was. That's what the first fellowship I went to. The guy told me, "So why don't you yeah. just why don't you give?" He didn't even say Jesus Christ. He said, "Why don't you just give Jesus a chance?" And I said, "Well, I really hadn't really ever thought about it, but I'm, I'm going to check it out." And that's yeah. all it took. That's all it takes. All it takes, mm -hmm. Michael, is just a is a little bit of hunger. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and if and, you're willing then, to step up, yeah, yeah and just yeah. pray, guys. I mean, just ask the Lord. He will reveal Himself to you in your life and circumstances. But I think a lot of people, they don't want to because deep down in the recesses of their mind and consciousness, they know. They know the moment that they start asking the Lord to come into their life and to reveal Himself, to be made known and to be real and have a real relationship. They know He's going to do that, and um, I know that. That's what happened with me, you know, and I would, I am so grateful for the Lord because just like me and Bob talked about it many times before, you know, it's just like, man, you know, I shouldn't even be here today, you no. know, but God's grace and his goodness and his mercy, you know, and that's what, man, when we have those moments with the Lord, it the growing in grace and we just grow in love and relationship with the Lord because we realize that mm -hmm. we shouldn't be here and we're just so so grateful for his love and when you really taste that goodness of god it, you understand and the character of god and that's something that a lot of people if they haven't experienced that they they can't see past the works realm right and once you get beyond once you've experienced the goodness of god and you fall in love with him for who he is and what he's doing in your life and the life of others you can't help but just just want to do better you know, his, the love that he puts in you just propels you to want to live for him more and so and it's not, every day. It's not an easy, it, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not an easy life. I mean, no, it's it, not. He says in John 10, 10 that he came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That's right. But it, it's not, it, it never said, he never said it's going to be without problems. I mean, we're exactly, we, we stand, we, we stand before <laughs> him, we stand before him blameless in love. But it never says we stand for him faultless in love because we're, exactly. we're gonna we're gonna fall we're gonna make mistakes we're gonna we're gonna need to have him help us through tough times and, and but we have an advocate with the father that's another thing jesus is an advocate he, what else do you need he's everything he's all that you need yeah. and he's an he, you know he's an advocate with the father and he's it just there's so many things we could be on here for weeks talking about yeah. what Jesus has done. And, and, but they, you know, the adversary came, comes to steal, kill and destroy, which he, that, that's his ministry his threefold ministry. Jesus came and we might have life and we might have more abundantly without yep. any problems ever. It never says that. Exactly. But it says that, that we might have life. 
And think and what's about the, the what's the opposite of life, Michael? Death. Yeah, and exactly. And think about it. Uh, before Jesus, you know, we guys, we're like the walking dead. And I think that's honestly where the elites get the whole zombie right. kind of complex from, where they try to drive this narrative of, a, you know, everyone, you know, flesh, brain, eating mm-hmm. zombie kind of thing. It's because, you know, let the dead bury their dead, right? We're all dead before Jesus. We don't truly live until we have been born again by faith, right? By grace through faith alone. And once we're actually born again, then we're actually living. But imagine how much more abundant the life that we're going to have in Jesus, right? When we are in our glorified bodies. So a lot of times we don't really kind of put, we see a sentence and we put a time constraint or a limit in our understanding. And we don't, know the full implications right to have life and life more but it's kind of like no weapon formed against you shall prosper right but yet we have people who have been martyred christians and things of that nature but Mm -hmm. the weapon that cannot take the spirit in the soul right god has reserved them the flesh is just the body right so at the end of the day did the weapon you know formed against that martyred christian prosper no because they're with the lord and they're going to get a redeemed body so sometimes we start you know we we box these these statements in and having life and life more abundantly. And then you look around and, you know, it looks like you're having a good life, you know, and you have all steams out there and, you know, we're making it rain. <laughs> so you're like, wait, this, this doesn't add up. But then that's where all these perversions of the gospel, the prosperity gospel, things of that nature stem from mm-hmm. because we had wolves in sheep's clothing who took advantage of verses like that instead of pointing to the real life that we're going to have abundantly in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I think that's really that's important good, to keep. That's a good point. Now, I got to ask Kevin something here. Uh, a lot of times when we're, we're talking on, on here and, and we're talking about things, um, over the years, we've uh, one of the, one of the points that you've brought up quite a few times is is um, being not being um, talked out of the uh, promises of God, not being talked out of the simplicity that's in Christ, because uh, th- that's one of the things that the, the world tries to do is tries to talk us out of of um, you know all the gifts of God are good. Can can you elaborate a little bit on that? You know, because I know that you you've been around the word for quite a few years, and you know, you know, being in the being in the occupation that you are, I'm sure that there's times when there's a an immense amount of pressure on you, and you have to. Um, what I'm trying to say is that you have to you, you can stay at peace through all the pressure that you're under. We're all under a certain amount of pressure, but time restraints and deadlines and things like that. How do you, how do you operate in that way? How do you, how do you remain peaceful when you're, when you're dealing with stress? You know, it's, um, it's taken, uh, it's taken a lifetime to get to that point. It's a, it's an ongoing process. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's part of, it's part of sanctification process. It's, it's growing in the spirit and getting those gifts that that you continue to build on. And then it gives you self-control and things like that. Self-control is like a major uh, important gift. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking at the world today and you can see when you don't have self-control, right? I mean, you can see examples of that uh, every second um, from every person from a person homeless to the person who's the leader of the free world lack of self-control. And if you don't have that, what happens is you start swaying with the wind. Things go back. And then next thing you know, you're being pushed to that side. And then what happens? You let your emotions get a hold of you. You start reacting to the, to what's going on. And then you start projecting things that are not fruitful and so the, the opposite of that, though, uh, Robert, is that you, you, you stay grounded in the spirit. You have the armor on. And so those darts that come at you as, at work or from other people or whatever, they don't stick to you and affect you. You see, that's the key is that you've got to have that armor on. So because what does armor do? It repels, right? It repels it. Anything that's trying to come in and influence you 
in a uh, in a detrimental way and cause you to stumble right so through experience you start you're able to see those things come at you before they even hit you and you can proactively and you mentioned this earlier is say a little prayer right before you speak and say help me here and i'm telling you that goes a long way because as soon as you do that your spirit starts to calm and then you're able to say to to start to reason you know let's let's reason here right i mean let's yes. not get all crazy and emotional so all those things combined it is a sim simple simplistic formula but it takes years of experience to hone it <laughs> and the only way that you can hone it is not by going to a doctor or by going to a psychiatrist or by whatever it's by communicating through the Holy Spirit to the Father, having discussions, stumbling, realizing that you did, learn from that, and then move on and not try to do that again. And so yeah. it is a constant, um, it is a constant soul wrenching, purging type of situation. I'm because, sure I to ask you about listen, that. There, because listen, one more thing. Because listen, <laughs> there are times when you want to lash out. OK, there are times that you want to let your soul run free and just go to town. <laughs> Believe me. But and I know you know this. Oh, yeah. But but, but what you got to do is you, you, you've got to rely on the spirit to help you through those times. Amen. Because you're not going to be able to do them on your own. OK. Amen. Yeah. That's that was see sense. that 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 was yeah. that that was hope inspired for me to you know once I got around to asking you to talk about some things like that I had no idea you know it was kind of like you need to get Kevin talking and, uh, <laughs> why not ask him about this because I I, re I respect you as a brother and uh, I know you've been around and you know <laughs> you ain't as old as me but you're you're getting older. I'm, so. I'm close. I'm getting yeah. close. Oh, to yeah. Oh, yeah. You just. Yeah. yeah. No. So, you know, you know, though, I'm a different person than I was yesterday. OK. Let yeah. alone five years ago. Yeah. Hey, you're a different person since I started ago. coming on uptime. Take, take all all and and look I'll, at yourself 25 years ago in the mirror. Can you recognize that guy anymore? I know he didn't have a beard. <laughs> so no. <laughs> he probably, he probably <laughs> reacted differently to circumstances that came out. Oh, yeah. And man, it's just you know when a, a believer such as yourself has been on the walk in in relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, being tutored, if you will, because it's exactly the same testimony that we all have you know god gives us the grace right to where when we make mistakes that we can learn from it and just like be, as a former addict you know we i know that there's certain triggers there's certain things certain symptoms if you will that will start to arise that uh, they call them like trigger responses or things of that nature to when you know like hey I'm getting ready to have an impulse or, hey, this is getting ready to go bad. So as we've stumbled enough times, we start recognizing those little trigger moments. And those are the call of the Holy Spirit saying, go pray. <laughs> go seek the Lord because something's coming. Well, we hope the... to have that, right? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. hope to have those trigger moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I mean, we know, hope to have he, that. He, God will send those trigger moments to yes. you to sharpen yeah. you so that exactly. you know how to withstand that trigger moment in the future yeah. it may yeah. take 10 times it may take exactly times. yeah but, but don't count it as you're being persecuted by god no are, no he loves you that's, that's why the he's greatest doing gift ever yeah because uh <laughs> this is a personal example of my failures for real to see him. i had a comment come through not on my channel but it was like through some other thing and um they said something ridiculous back, and I was like, and I was like sitting there, da, 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 right? <laughs> and I kept feeling the tug, like, Michael, just let it go. Just don't say anything at all. And I was like, so I kept backspacing, and I said it nicer, and then backspacing, and I said it nicer. And then eventually I, I ended up hitting submit, but, like, guys, as soon as I hit, you know, enter on the comment, so it actually posted, yeah, I just you felt a little, like, 
I felt the Lord yeah. like Mike, cool. and then I was like, and I quickly Good went call. back on that and just deleted my comments. It's like, all right, well, this whole this whole this, this, this whole social media thing is really. I grew up. <clears throat> there wasn't social media. No, you know, wasn't we, we, we had hard. we had three we had three TV stations, and the remote was whoever was closest to the TV. <laughs> they just installed uh, the, wi the wires for the telegram. Yeah, and sometimes we had to hold the wire just so we could even pick anything up. Did you miss that one? And, uh, there wasn't even FM radio and Long things road. like that. There wasn't twenty four hour, seven day a week news cycle. He's ignoring you. But social yeah, media, right in up. many ways, has been a, a real. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, has been real detrimental to good mental health because, you know, when we were growing up as kids, we were never, you know, we, we got back from school. We had a snack and we were out playing. We were outside. We weren't watching television. We weren't in front of the night. Boy, there wasn't that stuff anyway. We didn't have all that. All those distractions it was a different time. But now it's just, you know, look at, you know, the, the thing with uh, the problem with obesity in this country, mm. the kids don't, they're not active. They don't, you know, on a beautiful mm -hmm. day like we had today, they would, we would all be out doing something, playing ball or riding bikes or something. And it was, we didn't need to be on a, on a, in any kind of social media thing. This, what we're doing right now is, I mean, it's profitable, but at the same time, there's an awful lot of, um, negatives when it comes to a lot of the things that happen here um we can we can say things that that tear people down or we can say things that build people up like what kev was just talking about that really blessed me to hear that man because you know there's a lot of struggles that we all go through but there's nothing wrong with going through struggles this mm -hmm. is part of life mm -hmm. and we have the foundation we have a sure foundation you know, we have the rock of ages. We've got, you just, this is so, I mean, it just gets to the point where you just want to, hallelujah. I mean, that's all you can do, right, Michael? Amen. Because it's, yes. it's so phenomenal. Amen. Why in the world would he call me? Why? Yeah. And that there really would have been no the, reason for it. I, yeah. I wouldn't have called me. And that really. Well, I know why of, they called Bob. Because, <laughs> I mean, you need. We need to have Road to 23rd. We need to have yeah. a guy that can write yeah. books. Yeah, yeah and that's then, why you I know, got Barbara. <laughs> we all know why he chose God, Bob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, going back to the abundant life that we were talking about, really, that really kind of begs the question of, you know, what's your aim? What's your perspective, guys? Because when we follow the Lord and we, we start having, you know, such joy in the small things, just being content with what we have, you know, mm -hmm. instead of always lusting or longing after things that we do not have. So, you know, all these things in the world are just things and they're all passing away. So, you know, we can have an abundant life in the sense of, you know, having joy and peace and seeking the Lord and, and being blessed like what Bob was talking about with his revelation over the weekend. You know, when you have moments like that with the Lord and he speaks to you in the spirit and, and just shows you in the word, guys, those are the pearls. You know, those are precious, you know, gemstones, you know, that we hold dear to us. And and that is an abundant life. You know, you can have all the money and the gold and the silver. But, you know, if as long as, you know, when you're in a relationship with Jesus, that stuff makes you way more excited having those revelations and the Lord speaking to you and showing you Amen. and guiding you into all truth. It, it. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's nothing like it. It's there's priceless. Nothing like right? It. It's priceless. And and, and Michael's Michael's a young man in the word. Listen to him. I mean, you just blow my mind, man. I tell you, you guys Holy Spirit it, is working it's, to it's you, really, brother. That's, yeah, it's, it's just absolutely uh, amazing. It's I mean, so I've neat. seen that. Yeah. And that's how it's it's how it should be, especially when right. you you you're fresh, you come to the Lord. There was just this huge download. I mean, I'm using those, you know, creative license on the <laughs> On the phrasing there, right? But yeah. but this download of of all this information that just comes in, and you have no idea how it all came there. I mean, I remember my parents. I just impressed by how much I knew. All of a sudden, I was like, "Well, I said it's the Holy Spirit." <laughs> now, my parents, <laughs> yeah, now, my parents guys, coming from a Roman Catholicism and devout Catholics did not get that and did not take that uh, very well. But um, you know, still. <laughs> I mean, I wonder why. You become vocal. That's, well, you well, become... that's why God 
chose Bob. I mean, he had a statue in <laughs> his living room. Right? Yeah, but yeah. Bob's a Rome, you know, comes from Roman Catholicism. He I had know, a he's statue a in his living room. Yeah, I mean, he's more Catholic should... than any of us all could ever yeah. hope to aspire to be. I was yeah. big time Catholic. I was a nice of Columbus, and I fought people like you guys. Yeah, I remember playing basketball, fighting people like you guys, trying to defend the Catholic faith. <laughs> okay, so and no, of course, I couldn't fight with no, Bible you Bible. don't, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish I, I could have got some video of you when you were not saved, man. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> but you know what? Though, been, yeah. But you know what? Though I think, um, but that's but that's what well, that was a pathway that God gave me. So that way now I can sit here and tell other people who are in my position that were Catholics, which makes up most of Christianity on earth. Right. I can sit here now. You guys still hear me? Oh, the camera stuff. Yeah, you can hear you, you just can't see you. Okay. No, the camera you my camera just turned off. I yeah, must be weird. hitting I must be hitting Yeah, well, you know why. <laughs> yeah, I must be hitting some triggers now. So. Yeah, you're hitting some triggers now. Yeah. So, but that's where you know that's where the most of our base is at, guys. Because I think the majority of Christianity on earth is Catholicism, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. <laughs> I, I can't, I don't call it Christianity. Yeah. Okay, but but that's where 1.3 billion, 1.4 billion, it's about religion. 80 percent are Catholic. It's religion, right? Bob, it's re religion is, uh, yeah. I personally think that religion is the cruelest thing in the world. It, yeah, it, it's the it's it's religion that puts people in bondage. Yeah, it, you coolest. know, you look you look at the Pharisees it's and the coolest. Sadducees in, in the, in the time of Jesus and it's in really the first century. Different. What what did they do? Where the people should have been going to them for answers. The man at the temple gate should have been going to them for answers. The man born blind should have been going to them for answers. What did they do? Mm, they went to they were always more concerned. <laughs> yeah, they were always more concerned about him they, they didn't care that the man was healed they wanted it to be with their blessing right yeah. you know and then and then they accused him and they went put him all through in john 9 they put him through this terrible ringer he says i don't know who it was but i know now that i, I wasn't seeing it and now i see it. Mm. and why do you keep yeah. asking me would you be his disciples too i'd love that i would just that guy must yeah. have had guts would yeah. you be his yeah. disciples too can you imagine? <laughs> well, there you have there the eldest brother in the, in the parable of the prodigal son. There right. you have. You know, um, yeah. There's the elder brother who's who's just sitting there like, why? You know, why would you allow this to happen, Father? Right. What is he, look what yeah. all he's done. Yeah. Did Bob yeah. get raptured early? What happened? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Always knew he was going to be part of the first resurrection. Yeah. yeah. But the but elder yeah. brother that. That part of the prodigal uh, is is not right. looked upon much. I mean, we're always looking at you know yeah. prodigal son, but the elder brother, that is one thing that you have to realize. They're talking. He's talking about the, he's talking about the elders. He's talking about the religious rulers yeah, of that day. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And yeah. so um, if that's how the mentality is, and if that's someone's mentality right now out there. Be very careful. Be very yeah. careful about what you're, where you're going. I mean, what are they because... boasting about, Greg? They're, they're boasting, like, look how many man-made rules I'm following. Boasting, yeah. <laughs> Is that something boasting, to boast exactly. about, really? Boasting. Yeah. And if it's... we were really to see a move of the one true and living God within the churches today, mm. I mean, like it, like it happens on the day of Pentecost and, and moving forward. There you are, Bob. I was praying you'd come back. I thought maybe the Lord took you early there. <laughs> but anyway, if, if we really well, saw... You uh, we, go, you guys, where is it going to be that happening again? I got to have, have fun with Barbara. I Tribulation. Let her rain. Let her There's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit there. there. If we saw this mm -hmm. in the churches today to where people were going in and... and being healed and and you know there is a lot of areas where it's happening but if we really saw it happening i mean we're still we still have a certain amount of fear i think when it comes to really expressing um these things you know i mean in the first after the day of pentecost they were really they were so on fire that they just walked forth boldly you know who are these unlearned men that you know weren't these guys look what they're doing what look what they're accomplishing 
you know, th these guys, they, they didn't go to the right Bible college and they don't have degrees, but yet they're walking up to people and saying, silver and gold have I none, but it, what I have I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ, Nazareth, stand up and walk, take your bed. Mm -hmm. Well, who are, you, who are you to say that? You didn't go to the right school and you don't have our blessing. I don't yeah. need your blessing. The Lord told me to do it. I'm going to do it. This is the Amen. type of stuff that we need to see happening. This, yeah, this, I mean, how this, amazing all this is... religious baloney, and I can say that it's just a bunch of baloney. <laughs> it's holidays, you know, how we have to. Got up. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, and I've had people ask me this: so What right do you have to be teaching on the internet? The God, the Lord gave me. He said He made me an mm. able minister of the New Testament. That's what right, right. I have. Amen. Mm. You know, I'm yeah, an ambassador yeah. for the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. That's what right I have. I don't yeah. have. To I remember. Do. I remember being yeah. talk spoken to by my parents saying, "Who do you think you are? Hmm. <laughs> Who do you think you are?" <laughs> you're like, "What?" I remember that clearly. Yeah. As, uh, yeah. And you're uh, Mister. You're Mister. Big stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mister. Yeah. 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 He's Mister. He's Mister. Producer is what he. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who do you think you but, are? Starting up time. Who do you Greg? think Greg. you are? Yeah, where did you get, by the way? Where, where did you get the word uptime anyway? Well, actually, it, it never, started with that, that whole thing. It know. started with the whole thing with the times up thing, where they were dealing that that whole thing with the, um, uh, I think it was the Academy Awards, right? They had that pin, the times up pin. Oh, it yeah? was right before the pandemic. That whole thing happened. I said, "Oh, what if we swap the swap that around to up wow. time?" Yeah. So because times up, yeah, times up, but. The anagram of that, is, you know, yeah. up time. But more Deep importantly, stuff. it's up time. Do you know I, I, get up. About up I didn't time. finish talking about that dream of mine. Well, that dream I shared, you know, from oh, those yeah. the that video time. Yeah. about up time. Well, the oh, up time, the garments yes. were had the same logo as up time was on the package. Okay, but they were rapture <laughs> garments. This why the, the, the up time is the reason why God brought up time. Now, one, it was to counter what the enemy's doing. But it's also mm -hmm. the Lord right. showed me that uptime, Greg. He gave you uptime to prepare the church for the rapture. That's why it's called uptime. And in yeah. that dream, that's what the Lord showed her and showed me too, showing me right now, is that's what uptime was created. It was created. It will run for a short while right before the rapture. That's the whole point of uptime. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uptime is here because there's a transition about to take place. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why. Uptime, I'm sure, will come back at the end of the thousand year reign. Okay. <laughs> and there's a transition about to take place after that thousand year reign to the uh, eternity. Probably once an encore. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool, though, about uptime, you know, because I was actually just happened to just be thinking about it. And um, I was looking at some data networking protocol stuff and I was like, oh, yeah. You know what's interesting? I meant to tell you about this, Greg. I was like, one of the the term that they use in data integrity or signal integrity between a network and the different nodes it's is uptime. uptime. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uptime right. is like, and they always measure the success of their network based off of the uptime. Right. And they're, you know, they'll sell their, their network Amazing. pitches, your yeah. ISP being like, Hey, you know, we have, you know, hundred percent or 99.999% uptime, you know, and that's how they sell themselves. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. Cause uptime, it's like that connection the 100% connection we have with the Lord while we wait for the uptime. I was like, man, so that's true. Awesome. Well, now I can see the releases, comments now. You know, you guys think you're... <laughs> when we do releases, Michael, we, we strive to get zero, zero downtime, right? That's what <laughs> you're always looking for. It's like, and, and is downtime required, right? That's one thing that a release may require is downtime. You don't want to, you don't, you try to never have that. So you always want to be in uptime. Right. Up time. You All know, right. the great thing about that dream, too, the woman, she said that her outfit did not fit her. It was way smaller. Yeah, it's way too small. It was too small. And she's like, I'm a big woman. I'm like, not in the glorified form, you're not. That, right. that outfit is perfect size for you. <laughs> there, I think, when's the last time you saw an overweight dude? <laughs> you okay. cracked me up with that line, man. There were so many people in the comments that are like, Bob, did you just say it was the last time you saw a fat angel? And I'm like, he said overweight. He didn't say fat. <laughs> overweight. <laughs> and I went to that whole thing about weight just being, um, you know, overweight. It represents yeast, represents sin. sin. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's not going to be an issue for us. Mm. And our, and that's why her garment was a lot smaller <laughs> because it's a rapture garment. 
Okay, you know the great thing about it, I just realized it showed up at the door. Jesus is at the door. Okay, Amen. that door and that door open and boom, rapture garment. So, so would you say the rapture is a is a is a quick diet? <laughs> Very quick diet. It's like a dream diet. <laughs> <laughs> And when you when you started this when you started this way back what three years ago, right? Three years. Isn't the you door think it was narrow? It was, do you think it was gonna be three years? Um I, honestly, I saw at least three years, but then after the three years, there was something I think we were like getting yeah. to the close, yeah. close, oh, closing. Okay. That, that's just that just what, what was coming to me, but that's kind of uh, what what, what, uh, what what Doc's been talking about. Some kind of interesting uh, concept there because um, there's been a lot of uh, I'm I'm hearing about a lot of different people <clears throat> that have been coming across the uh, Tuesday night get together that we do, and mm -hmm. um, I really am not you know privy to how many people tune in or watch or anything. I see some numbers, but um, I don't I don't think it's, a, it's something you accidentally come across. You know, if you're on here, if you're searching for something and uh, you come across a Centurion's program with Michael, it's not because it's an accident. You're, you're drawn to it. Um, I really like those short ones you're doing, Michael, too, those... Uh, five to eight minute yeah pieces yep. the they're, they're really the really really good really good because you know five to eight it. minutes is you know you can sit and watch five to eight minutes it's harder to, it's hard you know, and even it's hard to doing shorter ones too it's easier <laughs> well it's easier to take it in small pieces like that and then you can yeah you know go back and watch it again think about it um i i shortened up the teaching i did the last time I think it was let, a little under half an hour. I got really long wind at the time before that. But I had to, I just felt I had to keep going. But well, it, it's to, yeah. hopefully know, we'll be able to get, post that for this week, buddy. All right. Yeah. Cause, uh, get the, yeah. We weren't able to because we uh, got the. You know. no, did you see another strike against you? Mm hmm. <laughs> I was surprised. But anyway. But any, uh, anyway, so, you know, it's yeah. it's been. Uh, this is usually the time you guys start taking questions. So I'm usually not here on here with you guys. Oh, uh, you're on the ball tonight, man. Wow. Uh, I didn't even realize what time it was. You, you, should, produce, yeah. you should produce this program, buddy. You, you, you. Yeah, you should. You produce the program. You should edit Bob's Road to 2030, <laughs> write a chapter. Yeah. yeah. Who? Cool. Just do the whole uh, thing. On, uh, yeah. Do, do the forward. Like, give yeah, a forward. They can do right. a forward. Of, uh, right. Right. The well, no, I would, you know, I was actually thinking about doing that i i don't um oh good i Bob would love you to do that i, I <laughs> will do anything i can to help you man. I please edit it, yes uh, but keep it short <laughs> the attention spans are very very <laughs> five yeah. to, five to eight minutes <laughs> five to yeah, eight. It, it, it can be a challenge that's why i like trying to go through concepts that are able to be condensed in that and i've already disclosed to everyone because my original goal was five minutes and i was like guys there's just no way that you can possibly do it always in five minutes so under 10 is what i'm aiming for for those i still love long studies i still do those you know but uh, to have something a little bit more short and concise if someone's wanting to look up a specific principle in the Bible, that's great to get it, you know, kind of like cram study in there and uh, working on a tree study. That's going to be pretty, pretty fun to do. But, uh, yeah, it's just so amazing. And uh, I think it's a challenge, uh, too, yeah. isn't it? It's very yeah, much it a really challenge is. to shorten things down. Even editing. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, the thing about it is how much air yeah. I did. You know, just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I, I didn't realize I wrote so much. So, um, man, I'm rambling right now. See? But the thing you the it's thing that you always bring up, Michael, that, that uh, is a real blessing and it's a real something that people should always keep in the forefront of their minds is to be like a Berean, is to be, you know, whatever you hear on here, if you think that we're just making these things up, you go into the word of God yourself. You don't need. 1500 research books just need a decent concordance and you know the willingness to take some time to look 
you know, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. There mm -hmm. is a way to rightly divide the word of truth. Yep. And there's Big nothing bad. wrong with studying. Mm -hmm. You know, how, exactly. how do you how do you learn? How do you learn to to do the things that anybody, you know, I mean, when you're learning a job, you have to study a lot of times. But exactly. you know, show yourself approved unto God, not unto men. You know, yep. if we if right. we had to if we have to always worry about being approved unto men all the time. That's the problem with this world. But if we're you know if we're studying to show ourselves approved unto God, it says even our enemies will be at peace with us. So, you know, it's just one of those things that um, whenever whenever Bob's book comes out, you know, whatever he, the concepts and the things he writes in there, you, you take the time to look into the word. And, and, that, and I know he's going to tell you to do that because... It's not just you know, thus Seth Bob and that's it. You know, it's the mm -hmm. it, it has to it has to fit. If it fits, you know it's right. from the father. You know, if Amen. it's all a bunch of Amen. confusion and gobbledygook, right. then it's and, you know, God isn't the author of confusion. Exactly. And you'll you find know? that continuity, yeah. you know, the witnesses throughout scripture, and that's how we, we establish true doctrine, right? Because it's not just here at in this one specific area, and you're twisting the entire meaning around. What well, you mean find you're not it. twisting stuff when you're yeah. doing your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, that's why I always try to tell people it's always good to look in throughout Scripture because you'll find the same things being repeated throughout patterns over and over and over again. And um, as Charles Lawson would say, that's so you don't get flim flammed, right? That way, the world can't try to to twist something on you and, and preach something that's not accurate. And um, it's really interesting. But when you have those revelations, like what uh, brother Bob had, that he was talking about over the weekend. And um, I was reading through the comments and stuff about, you know, we take no credit guys. It's all the Holy spirit. It's always been the Holy spirit. It's his gift. It's him that's leading and guiding us into all truth. And to remember, because when you're going through these these moments and stuff, your your flesh will still try to, you know, rear its ugly head around and try to be like, oh, yeah, that was you, you're so smart. You know, you just got to slap that. <laughs> like, no, no, that was all the Lord Jesus Christ in First uh, Corinthians four, six through seven. One of my favorite thing or scriptures to go to when when talking about such a thing. And it says, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself into Apollos for your sake that you might learn in us not to think of men above which is written that none of you be puffed up for one against another for who maketh you differ from another. And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now, if you didn't receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Right? So we see that such a, it becomes a, almost like a, a plague, right? The pride, the, the plague of pride comes in and it starts warping people and they start trying to come forward and say, you know, they, they act like it was from them. Like, oh, I'm so brilliant. I'm so smart. You know, I can connect these dots. Guys, none of us can do this in, unless it was the Lord Jesus Christ by his spirit that's guiding us mm -hmm. into the truth. And it's the same spirit that you have. So be excited. And, and, and have that abundant life, right? Searching the scriptures, going mm, from right. cover to cover, and have joy in the Lord knowing that he's teaching you. And all you need to do is just ask. I mean, there's been, you may not get your response real quick, but sometimes the questions you have are so, it requires such a, a layering, a precept upon precept approach to be able to understand what it is that you ask. But I guarantee you, and I can, you can take it to the bank, when God reveals the answer to the questions you prayed about in Scripture, you're going to remember. He'll remind you that time that you prayed about this and asked, and you're going to be like, that's oh, right. oh, Lord. That's and a lot right. of times you'll go, yeah. a lot of times, Michael, you'll read something, you'll study something for a long time. You may see something different each time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now we got that's the beauty of the living going word. Hey, let's get his uh, questions here. We got like 24 yeah, minutes left here. Come on. So, first one here is from uh, Palatius. He says, I know America is not in Bible prophecy, 
But do you think that what's happening right now, the border invasion, that we are not going to be a country much longer? No, we're not going to be a country. We're, we're already not a country. Okay. Our leadership is playing for the other side. It's obvious. Okay. Name one thing that this leadership has done for us over the last three years that helped any American at all. Not one single thing. And, um, uh, you know, it's kind of the same, the same thing that happened when Germany took over France. When they before they took over, they had uh they had leadership installed in France that helped them out. All right. That was basically uh I forgot what word I'm looking for, but basically it's a leadership that was on the same, you know, locked up with Hitler. Okay. Yeah. They were basically the same thing we have right now. China is basically our Hitler and our our government, the uh the Biden administration is their uh locked up government that's basically their catalyst government okay our satellite government all right that's overtaken our government and it just so happened over the last uh it's been three years and the emergency powers has come to an end okay yeah look what's happened to this country over the last three years when they had emergency powers it's not good for our government to have emergency powers mm -hmm. at all they should never have it again but unfortunately those three years are over with. i think they ended on the 14th so actually israel's birthday <laughs> so another coincidence how about that so now who so now evidently they're gonna look for something else now to uh give them their emergency powers again you know mm. but uh what do you guys think here you know do you think the united states is going to be on the map much longer here i no. mean honestly no. i think that uh I think we're seeing the final stages or the, I guess, maybe either draw up, depending on the way you look at it, or the final drawdown on the United States and its position on the in the global arena. I mean, we going back, I know we've said this so many times, but looking at all the markers of a strategic takedown of a nation or a fortified target, fortified city, you know, hardened targets, depending on what kind of verbiage you want to use, it's supply lines, you know, sicknesses, right? We've seen... Uh, trains you know we've seen orcs being blocked you know yeah. we see food, food distribution food centers manufacturers, yeah i mean we've seen That's so bad. much happening Everything. and now i'm starting to see more and more people talking about how they've been feeling not so energetic now you know and uh, i you know i don't want to go fringy on <laughs> brother greg's channel but you know or bob's you know I, but i think that we are definitely about to see uh the the end pretty a lot sooner i think than what most people realize which i think that's great in a sense obviously we don't want to see suffering or destruction of human life that's absolutely terrible but it just puts us in the the, the clock right it puts us that much closer to his glorious appearing and getting out of here mm -hmm. and being, and being with jesus this is the way i look at it bob is that the united states is based on 70 percent of the economy is consumerism right mm -hmm. what's going to happen when the rapture takes place and after the rapture, do you think there's going to be a massive influx of con consumerism that happens then? No, it's because just the opposite. So, um, you know, the way the country is going now with the decline in the cities, with the decline in the trust in, in erosion in the government, with what the government actually does behind closed doors is not like you said, is nothing is to actually help the people. So combine that with a crash that's going to occur with the economy, like the likes of which has never been seen before. And you can see how quickly it can turn into a war zone and then how quickly that turns into you're, you're working a whole day for a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. So um, could you imagine like what the middle class has now to what the middle class will have in working a day for a loaf of bread it is such a huge difference. But we but we're on the slope downward and I and the rapture is going to be a gigantic catalyst of just pushing the, the vile nail in the coffin. Oh, I agree. I agree. Oh, absolutely. You know yeah. what they did they, what they just did? You guys hear about this? That uh all the, the migrants that they're coming coming to this country right now, they've been pushing them into the blue cities, but a lot of the blue cities are telling, them, hey, we're full. You right. can't house nobody. You can't ship them out. You can't feed them or do nothing. You know what they're doing? 
uh, the Biden administration, okay, no problem. They're continuing to take them in there and just letting them off in the street and say, good luck, and yeah. leaving them. And just leaving people in the middle of the street homeless. So what do you think these people are going to do? Well, some of those mayors are shipping them out, Bob, to like, the, didn't you hear, Didn't wasn't it New York City just this last week, Greg, that said they're suspending sanctuary cities at this time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suspending being a sanctuary city because they've got too many, so they're shipping them out to suburbs. Well, there's a uh, there was a report. Um, I'm not going to mention the name of the city because it's not too far from where we live. But um, <clears throat> my uh, my wife's uh, cousin's daughter saw this the other day. Um, she was over. They were doing something for Mother's Day, and uh, there were tw she said there were a dozen white vans with uh, young uh, migrants. And most of them were were men in their early twenties, yeah. And they were just there. And there was tw like twelve white, and they were white vans, and they were just in this town. And it's not that far from where we are. So then she's saying, "Well, what are we? What are, we should be asking what they're going to do if, if they're going to come to our town? What do you mean if they're going to come to our town? <laughs> yeah, they're already there. You know. So it's just." Yeah. It's really. I've already noticed. And, and I'll tell you, I, I was talking now. to somebody yeah. about that today, because yeah. it's not. You know, every time you say that, and they want to, they want to put a, a sign of racist, and you're bigoted and all that stuff. I've worked with Hispanic people and Puerto Rican people and Black people for most of my life. Some of the best people I've ever known, and still do to this day, are minority people. But there are a lot of them that are not good people. Okay. Well, they're pushing so that's false just, narrative. you know, and we can all talk about that. It's, they're it's pushing just, a false this, narrative, Robert. They're, saying, yeah. they're telling everybody that they're coming over to, because they're trying to get asylum. But in fact, that's yeah. not the case. They're, yeah. they're coming over because, and they interviewed people who are coming over and saying, why did you come? Because I heard the border is open and there's jobs there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That is the reason why. It is not, and that's the reason why for 90 plus percent of them. And then yeah. for maybe another eight percent, they're terrorists, <laughs> and then about well, two and, and criminals, and then the other two yeah. percent or one percent might be is seeking some type of economic asylum. Well, but well you're down in, you're down in Texas. What's going on in the? I mean, we see these reports. What's going on at the border? Because evidently Biden is doing a little dance because he says, "Well, you know, it's not quite as bad. It doesn't seem like there's as many people coming across." It's the same narrative that they've been saying all along that it's not a crisis, yeah. that it's not oh, a problem, yeah. that yeah. the numbers are down. Oh, New York is the numbers are up so high that uh, and we're so high that yeah. if you if you brought it down just a little bit, they're going to they're going to boast just like inflation. Oh, inflation is at 0% this month. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. so, so so listen oh. They will try to pull the wool over the eyes, and you know what? It works for like half the population, yeah, because they are that does. dumb and that ill-informed and that willing. Uh, they're they're willfully being deceived. Okay, yeah, they're willingly right. it's, it's and a, willfully uh, being deceived. They want it's gonna to, be. Can, and it's going to consume resources, and it's going to destroy the country from the inside out. You know, and right. that's exactly another domino. And what we were talking about right. earlier, what I was saying earlier yeah. about the takedown of America. I mean, time. just just By over with this past this week, you know, they they had homeless veterans being kicked out of hotels to make yeah. room for for illegals, right? And I'm not saying you know I don't want to see anyone you know on the streets, but if it shows you the character of the government that they're willing to remove the men and women who serve the country, right? right. And they're going to exactly. kick them out to the streets yeah. for for nobody that shouldn't be here right. to begin you with. You created the crisis. It's you know, really oh, sad. Indeed. It's very sad. <laughs> they you know, are a perfect example of this plan, is you know, we had some trees in our backyard. And we cut down this one tree. It's a real big, thick tree. And the tree, the trunk of the tree is like really big, probably like a three-foot diameter, okay? I mean, three-foot of radius that goes across the thing. It's a real big, thick trunk tree. So I keep it on my deck. I put flower pots on top of them and stuff like that in different pieces. And this thing was solid as a rock. But then we noticed that there are termites that started going, in, going into it, all right? And there's just a few, no big deal, just like we have these migrants coming, just a few. But then they really started getting into it, and the, 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 the trunk was still strong, okay? But over time, as the termites 
flooded into this tree trunk and started working on it this past year I went to uh, just uh, my son was just set something on top of that tree trunk, like, like a plant, something like that. And that tree trunk just went, it just broke into five pieces, like dust. Okay. Wow. And that, he didn't see it. And it basically, it's like it didn't happen overnight. But once they all those termites got in there, yeah. and once they started, like you said, Michael, consuming all the resources, it killed it from the inside out. And yeah. then one day, that whole thing just collapsed. And think and about it, Bob, right the now. resources when we have so many distribution centers burned up, where where is it going to go? What, how are we going to get supplies out? You know what I mean? We have so many Achilles heels that have been, you know, corrupted or broken. And now we have an influx like that. I mean, you it literally spells collapse. Like, oh, yeah. Like, like Greg was saying, you know, it's coming. Plants, 111 mm -hmm. food crop plants destroyed. 18,000 yeah. cows blown up a dairy farm. Okay. 200 million chickens killed. All right. There's yep. any of the stuff. Is, is in, they're burning the candle at both ends right now. They're sending all and these people to work the about our hospitals are going to fall apart because yeah. they, they have to treat them for free. Exactly. You're not going to have a hospital. But what happens if your parents need something, Greg, Kevin, and you can't go to the hospital because the hospital got torn apart because they couldn't financially stay afloat? Because they have to treat all the illegal migrants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're destroying our hospitals. They're st destroying our food supplies. They're destroying this tree trunk right now we call it, that we call America. Wow. They're all coming in. It's not designed. We are not designed. Our infrastructure is not designed for another 50 million people. It's not at yeah. all. And they yeah. know that. It's so and funny they, you they, said tree trunk, too, because I just had a uh, dream of, of just a tree being taken down just going like this boom timber mm -hmm. and it just it, it was done i mean it was just real quick i'm like what does that wow. symbolize what is what is it you're showing me lord so yeah. it's the death of america yeah and you can't it's the see death it. of america you can't and when see you it, say tr trunk, trunk it, that side. that was confirmation for me that that is exactly what he was showing me i'm like what is this this mm. you know wow. and it's it's the death of america Happening but we right have now hope. as we speak. We have but hope. We have home. hope. We're going home soon. This Amen. means we're going home soon. <laughs> I mean, we got to, you know, there's there's a lot of bad things that are going on, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things that are, that will uh, cause the best of us to be depressed at times. But we have to realize that we have the, we have that hope, you know. And, right. the, and it's, it's something that, you know, we can, we can live it every day. It's a, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not a religious um, bunch of rules. You know, you want, you want to live according to what <clears throat> the precepts of the word, you know, what you learn as you go through the epistles and, you know, the, the different uh, character traits that Jesus Christ had. I mean, if we're supposed to be as he is in this world, we're supposed to you know, put on the mind of Christ. We have, it says we have the mind of Christ. we got to put the mind of Amen. Christ on because that's the renewed mm -hmm. mind. Amen. And that's, that's, Amen. that is going to take some doing. But at the same time, we're, we have that hope. You know, we, we're, we are, at one time we were without God and without hope in this world. And that's not the case anymore. So, you know, with everything that's going on, that's right. we can still, like like Bob was saying earlier, we can still be excited. We can still be, you know, blessed with no matter what's going on, even if it's, there's some things that just, you know, you want to just, because you're so, you're so screwed up. Can I clear but something up, though? One second. I want to clear something up for chat from chat. Is anybody here worried about the United States? Me? No. Are, are we worried about worried about coming or what's happening with it? Yeah. No. Are we worried about no. the United States and what's to come? No. Okay. No. At all. Well, we want to make that clear to people in chat that we are not worried about it. We we actually don't have worries regarding things of this world because we are not. This is not our final destination. Okay. Amen. This is. The, I mean, we're going to be out of here 
whether it be tomorrow or years from now, the fact is that we are going to be out of here sooner or later. And this is not where our treasures are. Okay. Exactly. No, it's not. So it's like, it's like that song, this world is not our home. We're just the passing through. Yeah. <laughs> we're, this is, we don't worry about these things. Uh, what, what, what good is that going to do? You know, that, that doesn't do anything. And the fact is, is that the fact that we're seeing this happen is exactly like it says that it's going to happen when it's mm -hmm. the end. So mm -hmm. all it is to me is not worry. It's a blessing. We're, mm -hmm. we're seeing this. We're seeing thousands, thousands of years old prophecy start to come to pass. And mm -hmm. how, can, how can you not get excited about that? Exactly. Is it sad in some respects? Of course, sure. when things yeah, end. It's true. Yeah. It's always sad yeah, sure. when things end. But there's a better, there's a better side to the other side. And and you know the key is is that if you don't have that hope with that you were talking about, Robert, within you, then you will get worried. You will sure. get down. You will get depressed because you want this world to be saved. You want this world to be utopia. You want to save this world. But Jesus yeah. has already saved this world. You see, and you can have the peace. That's right. If you have faith in him, you, you get the peace mm -hmm. that means this world, like Peter said, why are you, why do you care? This world's going to burn up. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. It's being set up. It's being set up for the rapture right now. You get all these people into this country. All the, all, all that's going to happen is you're going to get all these people. It's basically like a keg, big, big, big old keg bomb, man. You get all yep. the people into position and then. All you, all God has to do now is just light that, tr light that wick, man, and exactly. hit that detonator. And if yeah. we're removed, and you have all these people in the streets <laughs> ready to fight, getting these people's homes, and the rapture resurrection takes place. Talk about chaos! Yeah, yeah. talk about chaos. Okay, yeah, yeah. and you know, I've always wondered where are all these crowds of people coming from in dreams and vision. I've been looking at for the last 12 years. Okay, mm. where are all these people? Where are these people coming from? Where are these people? It's like chaos in the streets and everybody running in the streets and neighborhoods and people that, that and I always hear these dreams and visions where people see these people in their neighborhoods that don't belong there. Mm -hmm. They're not, they, they don't look like they're from our country. Okay, and I'm not talking about Chinese soldiers, I'm talking about mm. these migrants. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they saw them in their dreams 10 years ago. And I'm, yeah. I was like, I don't know. I don't know why they're there. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're seeing them showing up now, which means rapture resurrection is about to happen now. Amen. Because God didn't give us that dream for nothing or those dreams yeah. for nothing. Exactly. It's almost yeah. like the Red Dawn type stuff, Bob. Yep, unfortunately. Yep. You know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. you ever seen that movie, the first one? I'm not talking about the second one. I'm talking about the first Red Dawn movie mm -hmm. with Swayze yeah. and those people. And, and uh, yeah. you know, it was just they came in and, you know, everybody, they, first they thought it was a messed up airdrop. And the next thing you know, there's a, you know, World War Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but um, just like we've been saying, and Kevin, that was that was good. What you just said, I bless me to hear that, too, because. Amen. We have really have a lot to live for, so Absolutely. let's just yeah. go out. You know, let's just go out this week and maybe share the word with somebody. Uh, just be a blessing and exactly. and um, you know try to try to you know. I don't think we really ever win anybody to the Lord, but try to get to get them to take sure. it, you know give them Jesus give, give Jesus a chance. Here we go again. This is, what is always saying that. It's, it's this is what I found. This is what I found. When you're worrying, you're not nearly as productive than when you're not. Exactly. exactly. All, all it does is debilitate you. It, it puts you in a state where you're not fruitful and not active. Worrying yeah. is, and that's why it says, don't worry about tomorrow. I was going to say that. The flowers, <laughs> right? be, yeah. be anxious. Yeah, don't worry about, about tomorrow. Yeah, be anxious. The, tomorrow has its worries of its own. Itself. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. exactly. Amen on that. Just overcome and, you know, guys, this body, like this tent, this flesh that you see <laughs> on the screen, this ain't my eternal home either. I'm going to get a new body. So that's right. Even as we wait for the Lord, 
whatever happens in America or around the world or the, you know, the Western side, you know, if it gets <laughs> dicey before the end, you know, we still have that same peace, right? We still have the same peace because I know this, this flesh is in my home. So whatever happens to it, you know, that's whatever happens to it. Cause my hope is still in Jesus and that's never going to, that's never going to end. So you can have that peace and know that, you know, I remember one time, cause you guys know, I think I mentioned it before that I, I suffer from pretty bad anxiety attacks and PTSD and stuff like that. And uh, I remember waking up one night in the middle of the night and it felt like I was having a heart attack wow. and I was sitting there and my heart was hurting and my chest was beating and I was sweating. And I was like, well, this is it. It's it. But I ain't going to stay up for it. <laughs> and went back to bed. And I was like, I had such peace in the Lord. You know, I was like, yeah. well, Lord, you know, I was like, whether I'm here or gone, I know you got yeah. me. So I'm going back that's to bed. That's that's that that renegade sleep. Michael tells, I tell you. Man, but, this, is, but this is all about faith. Yeah. There's somebody Amen. in the chat right now who just said, I'm worried that the rapture is going to be too late, that God's going to make a mistake. No. Okay, God has no been from the beginning. Okay, so no. he doesn't make mistakes. He's got this, and that's what yes. faith is all about: is trusting in Amen. Him, not trusting yes. in that you get the knowledge to figure it all out, or that you're going to be yes. able to, to know everything Amen. and this and that. No, mm. it's trusting that the Lord has everything under control, and that He loves yeah. you, and that if you walk in His ways, you're going to be protected. And if you Kevin, put on yeah. the full armor, you will. Yeah. You know, what an eloquent guy you are. I see. It just see. I I miss you when you're not on here. Man. I'm always well, trying. I'm always, stay, I'm always yeah. boasting about you anyway. So well, then I better keep coming on. You should. You should keep coming <laughs> yeah. on. Greg, it's ama it's Greg, amazing. Greg. You know, it's get the email. I'll come. Yeah. There was a there was a miracle. <laughs> Send it to two of you tonight. He said two. I stayed on the whole two hours. Which does not happen usually. I'm usually more by this time, but uh, you know, being with you're my still on a roll. Is, you're going to go uptime uh, overtime with Robert uh, Hagen here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about overtime, man. but, but um, <laughs> I can't grow a beard like Pell, so I really feel bad. I, Nobody not, can grow know. a beard like Pell. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what this beard is, man. It just <laughs> keeps growing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just its own, it's its own thing. It'll have its own rapture moment. You know? uh, 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 Thank you, the friend, Michael. Hey, don't hey Greg, Ma Michael's gonna. Michael's like Samson. You know, if he does if that, beard keeps growing. He's gonna blow us all away. <laughs> <laughs> I started measuring don't time in, in beard don't inches. Yeah. You know, yeah. like oh, don't one beard inch is when this happened. Yeah. Yep. We're not picking on you, Michael. You look fat. You look fantastic. You look <laughs> yeah, okay. You, you guys know that. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, I got something here that uh, I want to mention before, the, before we wrap up. Um, how close are we to the rapture? Um, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys heard about this yet. Our government right now is building a 45-acre compound in Lebanon in the Middle East right now. Hmm. And I think it's a uh, a getaway for whatever's about to happen. All right? Huh. But they're building it right now. So, and, and the other thing, too, is uh, everybody's, you know, there's people disappearing right now. Okay? Like, for example, Hunter Biden. Nobody can find him now. Okay? I he was in the White House last isn't isn't that a good thing? <laughs> and a lot of the people that were supposed to be uh, the whistleblowers against him have disappeared too. But I was in the Lincoln yeah. bedroom with a knife. I just you think know. that people they got CEOs disappearing, celebrities disappearing. Okay, something's coming. Okay. All right, yeah. something, something right around the, something this summer is coming. Yeah, something this summer. So. This uh, even mm. before the summer starts. Yeah, well, okay, a lot of the, a so. lot of what's yeah. a lot of what's happening right now. And this is just my own private interpretation. Is this this Epstein stuff? It's yeah, the, you know the books he had. Oh man, he's got. The little black we think book. we think our government is a bunch of you know these people are all interested in doing stuff for us. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I better stop there. I don't want you to get. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Bob, but you, people, should, you, you set up people, chat, people, di people disappearing, <laughs> Hunter's um, you know, and and uh, you know, people that are going to be witnessing against these elitists, you know, not all of a sudden they're gone, 
and they don't know where they are. Um, it, it's like uh, it's almost like the mafia. It is a mafia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a cartel. Oh, nice Can you say yeah. that? Yeah, I just did. You know, it's a cartel. <laughs> All they are a bunch of cheeseburger <laughs> eating prisoners in yeah. this world. That's all they oh, are. There's yeah. somebody on earlier. They got their cheeseburgers. Yeah. They're happy. A cheeseburger, cheeseburger, Pessy. Remember you're that? Gonna, that thing that uh, Saturday Night Live you're did with, with uh, they go in and cheeseburger, cheeseburger, Pessy. I want a Coke. No, Pessy. <laughs> no, Pepsi, Coke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, good it's, show there, Greg. Yeah, well, before we end, I do want to make mention of Brother Paul Adams. A, he does need our help, okay, um, specifically in the area of finances. Now, of course, if you are not able to contribute, um, we completely understand. But we have to realize Paul uh, does live out of his van. His van is currently having some issues with it, did not uh, pass emissions, and uh, mm -hmm. he could use our help. So he does have a... Uh, he does have a GoFundMe page currently uh, set up. And if you feel led to, um, you know, to donate, go ahead. Uh, if you don't have the ability to do that, completely understandable. Please lift them up in prayer. And uh, yeah, and here's the, uh, the link. He created this link so it's easier for everyone to uh, to access tinyurl.com slash live board van um so yeah it, it's uh he's going through a lot right now he's going through a tough time um don't typically bring these up but of course because he's an uptime panelist i am bringing it to your attention because there's a lot of people hurting right now um you know mentally physically emotionally financially right uh so there are many people who are going through stuff right now but i wanted to bring this to uh to everyone's attention uh, please, if you feel led to uh, to donate to that. Um, so there you go. There you have it. And um, that's it. Well, yeah, again, again, will you be yeah. putting that information in the, the description? So uh, obviously for uptime, I can't I can't post anything right now up until I think yeah, the end yeah. of the day tomorrow. Uh, but um, eventually, yeah, I think if what I'll do is I'll put up uh, uh, Paul's website let me uh, let me bring up his uh youtube channel there's his youtube tube channel right there so there it is paul adams youtube.com forward slash at symbol 444 age okay so i don't have the ability to post anything right now i just don't so yep. please to make note of it if you feel led please donate i wonder if uh if you can't is paul right. in the chat i don't think so i oh. have not seen him in the chat at all so okay. All right. All right. That's that. So anyway, uh, thank you all for coming on with us. God bless you. And we do hope to see you next week. And for those who have joined us on the first Rumble broadcast, thank you for coming on. I think we had about 67 of you. I think it was 67 I saw. Neat. So thank you all. That's and we awesome. can't we can't uh, have the same interaction as we do with the YouTube option with this live streaming platform called StreamYard. Uh -huh. But I have been going back and forth to the Rumble uh, Rumble site and just seeing uh, your comments there. So uh, you are not forgotten. <laughs> we do see you there. You are noticed. And uh, if you have questions, too, we can post them. We can copy and paste and post those questions also on this platform. So, all right. Just let we'll me know. We'll be back on uptime next week, right, Greg? Uh, yeah, we are planning on doing that. I have to pray about it. Uh, there's, there's something... There's something that's brought to my attention because this is this is going to get this is going to increase this is going to escalate it's not going to be more on the misinformation policy it's going to be it's going to escalate to the point where they're just going to you mention anything about lgbtq you don't mention anything that stuff are going to be yeah. warnings they're going to be strikes the lord's showing me this i i'm i'm I don't know how quickly it's going to be, but it, it, it's going to happen quick. Well, I don't know happen. for sure, but it is. Yeah. He's showing me it's going to be quick. And then all of yeah. a sudden, boom, yeah. your channels are going to be gone. So yeah. we have to be very careful. I'm going to pray about it, whether we're going to go live or just continue to go live on Bob's channel and continue to use the uptime live stream as a backup. But uh, let me pray about it. Okay. Make sure that you guys are on part of the, uh, part of the newsletter and uh, keeping 
up to date with that. That is also in the description. Okay. Sounds all good. right, everyone. Yeah. All right. Great one tonight. God bless you all. And yeah. love uh, you guys. Yeah. Thank you, brother. brother. Love you all. God bless you. Take care. See you next week. Welcome to Uptime Community, an online community of believers actively seeking the return of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. We uncover topics that pertain to Bible prophecy, world events, and unique end time perspectives. Be sure to catch the midweek studies that are posted every Wednesday. Please feel free to join us so you can participate in this interactive forum. Can't join us live? No problem. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube, and recordings can be downloaded on iTunes and Spotify. Just do a search for Uptime Community, and stay informed with the latest happenings at www.uptime.church. God bless you, and we hope to see you there.